Hey there, I'm Samara Lin. I'm the lead networking analyst at PCMag.com, and I'm going to show you today the quick and easy way to set up a wireless router. Now, you can use these instructions to set up a new wireless router, but you also can use them to set up a previously used router. Let's say someone gave you a router. Now, if that's the case, if you're using a refurbed router, the first thing you want to do is reset the router back to factory settings. Now, most routers have a recessed reset button, either on the back or somewhere on the side of the router. So you just want to take a paper clip and you want to hold that button uh, for about 30 seconds with the router powered on. And you're going to hold it until the LEDs flash and then stop blinking. That pretty much indicates that the uh, router is reset. So let's get started. To set up a router, you first want to disconnect any router you currently have connected to a DSL or cable modem. So turn off your ISP provided modem, connect an Ethernet cable from the modem to the WAN port of your router. Connect an Ethernet cable from one of the LAN ports on the router to the Ethernet port of a laptop or computer. Now, if you have a newer wireless router, say, made in the last year or so, a lot of these routers already have a pre-configured wireless network set up. The SSID of the network and the passphrase will usually be on a sticker on the router or in any accompanying documentation. So you can skip that second uh, connection of the Ethernet cable from the LAN port of the router to a computer, and you can just use a laptop or any sort of wireless client just to connect to that pre-configured network. Now, I still prefer the wired method because it eliminates any potential wireless connectivity problems that could cause problems with the initial setup. Also, if you're using the wired versus wireless setup, I like to disable the wireless adapter of the laptop I'm using for setup. This way, the laptop does not connect to any other access points in the area that I may have connected to, and then I'm connected to two networks on the same machine, which could cause setup problems. So, once you have the two Ethernet cables connected, connect the power on both the modem and router. Now, you want to power up the modem first. When the modem is fully powered up, you'll see green lights on it. You can then go ahead and power up the router. Once the router is fully powered up, again, when all lights are steady and not blinking, you can go into the router's management software to configure it. Most routers nowadays don't come with setup disks. Most of them have browser-based software for setup. You can access this software from the computer that's connected to the LAN port of the router. You do this by typing in the default IP address of the router as the URL. The default IP address is usually on a sticker on the router or provided in the documentation. You can also find the IP address by typing the IP config command in Windows at the command prompt. You can see here my default IP address of my router is 192.168.3.1. So that's what I'm going to type into my browser as the URL. Here, I'm getting prompted to log into the router's management interface. And this is where you put in the admin username and password. This information is usually included in the documentation or on a sticker on the router. Now, if you have an older router or a pre-used one and you set it back to factory default, you can usually find the default admin username and password with a Google search. This router uses admin as the username and password. Now I'm in the interface. The first thing you should do is change the admin password for security reasons. The next thing to do is set up your wireless. New routers will usually already have an SSID set up for both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz band in dual band routers or just a single SSID for a single band router. And usually they'll have the passphrase set up as well. You want to ensure that security is set to WPA2 encryption except in those rare cases where you have wireless devices that don't support WPA2. However, most these days do. Apply your settings and congratulations, your router is set up. Of course, you can at any time do more configurations such as enabling quality of service, setting up firewall rules, or any other features your router supports. And that is how you can set up just about any wireless router. For more wireless networking tips, 
uh, router reviews and thousands of other tech product reviews, check out PCMag.com.